Within the last few hours, the lounge of this hotel in Holland has been gradually filling up with people. Many of the faces, I'm sure, you'll recognize immediately. And there is, I can tell you, only one topic of conversation. The next two days. And we welcome you now to the 1976 European final of The Superstars. Over the past six weeks, 40 champion sportsmen, including 14 who have won medals in the Olympic Games, have been competing to try and reach the final of European superstars. Well, behind me now, here in the Hilton Hotel in Rotterdam, together with the officials, timekeepers, judges, and the European broadcasting teams, are the 11 who've made it and the 11 who face the two days of competition before they have a chance of gaining that title. Well, last year, of course, it was Shell Isaksen, the blonde Swedish Olympic pole vaulter who just beat Britain's David Henry to become the first ever European superstar. And he did it in that rather intense atmosphere of the Ahoy Stadium. Isaacson is here again. He's taken part in the heats. He's qualified to win through to this final, so he's here defending his title. And he'll be in that Ahoy Stadium, and incidentally, in front of a crowd which is already estimated on ticket sales to be approaching the 10,000 mark. Together with Isaacson, we have for Great Britain this time John Conte and Gareth Edwards. There are eight more from all over Europe which makes 11 champions and record breakers all competing for the title of European Superstar. The world speed skating champion Johan Granath from Sweden. The reigning superstar champion and Sweden's Olympic pole vaulter Shell Isaksen. For Britain, world boxing champion John Conte. And the Welshman, who made it in Vichy, Gareth Edwards. Belgium, the Olympic silver medal athlete Ivo van Damme, and their Seven, international basketball player eight, Corky Bell. Nine. Marco Ostrzewicz, another basketball player for France, who also have the Olympic gold medal athlete Guy Drew. Holland have their national superstar champion hurdler Frank Nusser, and the only footballer, international and Ajax captain Rudy Kroll. And finalist number 11, Olympic ski jump champion from Austria, Karl Schnabel. Well, those are the 11 men that uh, Ron Pickering and I have watched and commentated on throughout the five European heats. And I think, Ron, that the mental approach to this problem of multi-sport competition over two days is shown up particularly well in the sports you're associated with, like gymnasium work, the weightlifting. I think so, too. I think it becomes a sort of crucible. Uh, and it did demands the respect of all the other superstars to find out who is both the fittest and the strongest. And this is where Isaacson, of course, is so powerful. Difficult to take points from him there. But Gareth Edwards has been getting stronger and stronger every time we've seen him and can now match him pound for pound in weightlifting. It should be a cracking competition when those two meet. When I think of John Conti, well, he's a superlatively fit boxer, magnificent. And Carl Schnabel, too, in the gymnasium. Well, those three could provide, again, marvellous competition. But for one man who's got just as much talent as Isaacson for my money, it's the Frenchman, Guy Drew. The Olympic champion at hurdles, a marvellous pole vaulter in decathlon, but he's got that Gallic flair which says if it's all going well, well then he could match him and could 
even contest the title with him. If it goes badly, he, well, Guidru is down. And when he's down, he can lose the next two events. All in all, I think it's terribly unpredictable. And that's what makes it exciting. Well, down on the track for event one on this first morning. Sad to say, it's an unpleasant, cold and breezy morning. But the worst news of all is that Gareth Edwards is confined to bed with flu. He had a sore throat at the cocktail party last night. It's developed a bit. But somehow or other, he's going to try and make one or two of the events for superstars. It means that Britain's chances rest with John Conte. And sprinting hasn't been his strongest event. And what's more, he's got to fight his way through one of the heats just to make the final. I think the two favourites must be the athletes that are involved. Eva van Damme, the double silver medalist from Montreal, and the very good Dutchman who won the Dutch Superstars and is a talented 400 metre hurdler, that's Frank Nussa. John Conti, real problems here. He's seen heat one having been won by van Damme, but uh, in fact the fourth man, Schnabel, clocked 12.4. And of the nine starters in two heats, the uh, finalists will be made up of the heat winners plus the four fastest losers. So he's got to find a place faster than 12.4. In this uh, heat two, he's uh, got uh, Starchevich there from the Racing Club de France, and you saw uh, earlier, Corky Bell. They're all lined up, Kroll, Starchevich, John Conti, Corky Bell. And it was the heat that Gareth Edwards was to have run. John Conti on the left, Rudy Kroll in orange with white shorts on the bottom. On the far side, we've got Kroll and Ostarcevich. Ostarcevich versus John Conti at the moment. Kroll hits the tape first, and, get, and really, John Conti was fighting for third or fourth place, and I don't think he's going to better that 12.4. Meanwhile, Shale Isaacson has well qualified for the final. Didn't even watch that second heat. Doing his own private thing in warm-up. There's Carl Schnabel, the man that kept John Conti out of the final. Confirm that John hasn't made it his time, 12.6, and the final will be made up of Van Damme, Nusa, Isaacson, Kroll, Schnabel, and Ostarcevic. There's Frank Nusa, who on his, uh, at his best time would have qualified for a bronze medal in Montreal, but failed to make the Olympic Games through injury. Rudy Kroll, the professional soccer player. There, bearded, Eva Van Damme for Belgium who was really the surprise of the Montreal Olympic Games with his finishing speed over 800 metres and 1500 metres. So, Van Damme, Nusa, Isaacson, Kroll, Schnabel, Starcevich. Frank Nusa this side, then Rudy Kroll, then Eva Van Damme in lane three. And I think it will be between the two athletes, Frank Nusa on this side, and Eva Van Damme with Isaacson running for points on the far side and still the little man Isaacson from Sweden running well, but he's running to third place. It's a battle on the line. The battle on the line between Frank Nusser on this side and Eva van Damme of Belgium. And some uh, difficulty in determining that. I think the photograph will say who won, but we think it's Eva van Damme. Perhaps the photograph will help us this time. Far right, Shale Isaacson of Sweden, running for points. But the two athletes, Frank Nusser in lane one, all in white, versus Eva van Damme. And it really was a battle on the tape. I don't think the stopwatch will separate them, but certainly van Damme will get it on his dip. Well done, Eva. Ten points from the sprint. This yeah. one was a little bit closer than Vichy. Yes, uh, it was more difficult for me. Were, uh, you, were you confident before you started? No, I, I, I can't take very well my starting blocks, but I'm very good at the finish. Did you know how close Frank Nusser was to you? He was, uh, he was always him? leading, but when I jumped, I was I won. So you just made it on the line. Yeah. And were you? Did you know where Isaacson was on your left? I don't know. No. no. Anyway, ten good points yeah. again for Belgium. Well done. Thank you. No doubt in the athlete's mind, but that dip finish made the difference between ten and eight, and you'll notice a difference in the points: ten, eight, six, four, two, one. Well, no more than a tenth of a second pushing John Conti out of the points in that opening event, but uh, he could well score points here because he's down with us on the Ahoy Lake in the canoe race. John, uh, this must be one that you're looking to, having won the canoe racing in your heat at St. Ives. Yeah, I think uh, I'm a little bit better at this than I am at the sprint, I think. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, they're all good lads. Anyone coming this? You say they're all good lads. I remember uh, when you finished at St. Ives, you made that remark, this is no longer a joke, it's uh, serious. Uh, what right, do you yeah. think, Sophie? You've seen the men you're up against, 10 of them. It is pretty yeah. serious, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. You know, and they're real, real good competitors, uh, especially um, the Swedish lad. He's excellent. He's, excellent. Like, you know, he's really a uh, good competitor, you know, and he's a good all-rounder. He's just got that third but, place in that 100 so far. Yeah, yeah, but they're all really capable of uh, you know, winning. 
Mentally, I think you're right because you're much more relaxed here. You're a little uptight in the heat of the knives, I think, weren't you? Yeah, well, um, I was afraid you know, I was going to fall over then because I wasn't as competent as I am today. After saying that, I'll probably end up with my head on the bottom dragging, up, dragging the, the silt and the sand off of the the duck you've, shampoo. You've opted out of the swimming, so if you do go in, you could be in a bit of trouble, couldn't you? Yeah, but I was speaking to them in the hotel last night. There's some American divers working on an oil rig offshore, so I know all what to do once I do hit the bottom. Right? You know, I know what to do, so I had good instruction. <laughs> good luck with this in the points, John. You've got a heat to go through first. Make the final scores on board. Yeah, thanks, David. Good Don't luck. forget to throw a light belt on me, OK, when I go We'll away. be standing by, all right? <laughs> Marco Ostrachevich, the basketball player from France, who's in this canoe heat with John Conte. Frank Nusser, the Dutch hurdler, and their national superstar champion also in, and Evo van Damme, the 100 meters runner from Belgium, and it's also got Guy Drew, the other Frenchman, who's in lane one. Drew, of course, the Olympic gold medal hurdler. And away they go. Drew, Ostrachevich, Conte, Nusser, and van Damme. Up the course, 125 metres. Heat winners and the three fastest losers will make the final. So if you don't win, you've got to wait until the other men in the heat have gone. And Conte is going well over there. Conte looking pretty good. And Drew's up as well. And so is Nusser. It's between these three at the moment. And it's Drew, Conte there over in the middle. And Nusser on the far side. And Drew and Conte together at the front. Conte dropping back just a little. Drew looks to have the better stroke. And Drew digging in well, but Conte's keeping a good line. He's powering along. Remember, he won this in St. Ives, and he's looking good in this as well in this first heat. Winners and three fastest losers to make the final on the angle. A little bit deceiving. Conte pulled up. Nusser's pulled up. But Drew coming well at the finish, and Conte just ahead at the moment. It's coming to the line there, and it's Drew. Drew by about an inch from Conte. And Frank Nusser, what a good heat. Very good indeed, and Conte going very well. So Drew wins the heat. He's done well in rowing in the past. He's done well in canoeing, and he's certainly made the final. There's John Conte. I think he'll probably qualify, because that was a fast heat. And Frank Nusser in third place. We'll wait for the times from heat two to know who makes the final, and they're on the line. Schnabel, the Olympic ski jump champion, who won the Dutch heat. Isaksen, Sweden, the European champion. With him, Granath, the other Swede, the uh, speed skating champion. And Rudy Kroll, the only footballer, fourth in that 100 meters win or get inside 50.1 to qualify for the final. And the way they go well, Granath in lane two, Kroll in lane four, and it's Isaksen. Isaksen who's making the break at the start. Isaksen in lane two, going well. And Schnabel's dropped back just a little bit, and it's Isaksen and uh, Granath. Granath up. Good long strokes, but look at Isaksen. There is perfection canoeing almost. Look at the economy of effort. Schnabel, he's a bit all over the place. He's not really keeping the line, he's having to work for it. But Isaacson pulling long arms, long strokes, economy of effort, getting maximum result of it. Look at the way this man powers through. And he's really making all the running in this heat too. It's going to be who's second and third. Certainly Isaacson is through as he crosses the line. It's going to be Granath, the other Swede in second place. And it's Schnabel coming up to take third place. And Kroll, we're looking at the clock. Kroll, Kroll is too slow to make the final. Isaacson's in because he won, and with Kroll's time, it means that Conte gets in from Heat 1 as well. <laughs> right. Okay. Five. Line two. Two. I can be by myself. Three. Three. Four. Four. You're wondering. Right, OK, just confirm. Guy Drew, one. Carl Schnabel, two. Johan Graner, three. John Conti, four. And Shelley Isaacson, five. Well, one man who has complained in the past, Guy Drew, second in this event when he was runner-up in the French heat. He's in the final. Carl Schnabel, we were seeing him, of course, in the annual Garmisch Day ski jump. Conte. Granath is on the line as well. Just moving up to it. And Shelley Isaacson already ready. Final of the canoe. And who's going to make the break? It's Drew, Schnabel, Granath, Conte, and Isaacson on the far side. And we saw the economy of effort that Isaacson put into his heat. And he's the man who makes the break on the first marker. Isaacson right on the far side. Drew is well up. Conte is dropping back a little bit. Granath in the middle lane is well up. And Conte and Schnabel are the two men who dropped. And looking across the line, it's Isaacson at the moment just in the lead from Granath, the other Swede, and Drew on the near side in third place. And Conte's in trouble. Conte's in a bit of trouble. He lost a little stroke. They're right at the back. 
with Schnabel and Conte lost the stroke. There's Isaacs and Powers on on the far side. It's still Isaacs and Granath. And there's Conte, he's gone across the lane. He's across the lane beside Granath. He stopped paddling and it's Isaacs who takes it from Granath, from Drew. Isaacs and Granath drew and Conte in all sorts of trouble there and really went astray in that canoe final. Well, no reruns, no inquiries, and Conte trying to laugh off a rather bad event for him, but he picks up two points, as we said, but it's Isaacson there with the 10, and uh, that'll put the defending champion at the top of the table. He's overtaken Van Damme, who didn't score from that, and already three athletes are one, two, and three. Granath right on their heels. Final of five in this 50 meter swim. Carl Schnabel drawn there on the inside. That's lane two. Rudy Kroll for Holland in lane three. Schnabel, of course, going for Austria. Frank Nusser in lane four. Then Marco Starcevic in lane five. And on the far side, the favorite, Shane Isaacson, who recorded 34.2, the fastest time in his semi final. The big surprise was that Eva van Damme, the Belgian, who won in Vichy, was knocked out in the heats. So on the far side. It's Isaacson swimming very closely with him, Marko Starcevic, the second fastest man. And then in the white hat, Frank Nussa. And on this side, Karl Schnabel. But it's all on the far side and all eyes now on Shell Isaacson. Valuable points for the reigning champion and Isaacson's going to get there. Nussa perhaps will be second. Isaacson strike, Nussa gets second, the Starcevic is third. And then on this side, Schnabel is fourth. And Rudy Crow coming in on his back for fifth place. Maximum points for this great all-rounder. Shale Isaacson wins the swimming. And ten surprising points for Isaacson because he regarded this as his weakest event. He's clearly been training for it. Nusa gets the eight, Ostachevich six, Snarble four, Kroll two. Well, there's certainly no doubt about the fact that this reigning European Superstars champion, Shell Isaacson from Sweden, has made uh, quite a start on the way to defending his title. He's now had two outright victories in the first three events and a really dramatic improvement on his swimming, which was his worst event in the qualifying heat in Gothenburg. Remember when we spoke to him there, he said, I'll improve on the events that I haven't won. And he's certainly doing just that. But well, the man nearest to him on the points table at the moment is the Dutch track athlete Frank Nusser. He's nine points behind. Schnabel, the ski jumper, well, his best events are still to come. He's level there with uh, another athlete, Von Damme, the Belgian double Olympic medalist. John Conte, he's only done two of the three events so far. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. And for that, well, we've moved back to the Hilton Hotel, the second of the three venues for this competition. Two events are going to be held here to complete the first day, and it's here at Superstars headquarters that we've got news of Gareth Edwards. Well, in fact, the news of Gareth Edwards is that he's up and about and even tracksuited, but how much he's uh, capable of doing in this final, well, it's down to you, Gareth. How are you feeling? I'm not as uh, well as I thought I'd feel, but I'm uh, looking forward to having a go at the shooting. At least uh, the doctor said that um, well, that should be all right, but I doubt very much whether I can do the gym test later. What did the doctor say it was, Gareth? Uh, a, a touch of flu, really, more or less. I think probably I got that at Vichy, but uh, I've got some tonsillitis inflammation, um, a temperature, and I just generally feel weak. So he's anxious that you don't do the sweating activities, yes. but he's happy for you to have a go at the shooting. That's right, yes. What about tomorrow, if you maintain this improvement? Well, I'd like to think I could take uh, take part, but as he said, it all depends on really how I feel tomorrow. The one yeah. thing, uh, the advantage we've got, of course, is that it'll be all indoors. Um, yeah. But, of course, the one thing we've got to guard against is that uh, I sweat and catch a cold again. Sure, but you're not going to be at your absolute best in the weightlifting, <laughs> where we were, we were banking on points there for Great Britain. I think I'll be satisfied if I could lift the bar without the weights tomorrow, <laughs> yes. Anyway, good luck. Maintain the progress, and we hope to see some more of you in the events tomorrow. And good luck with the shooting now. Thank you, Ron. the indoor range with the clay disc and the air pistol shooting from eight meters. Least number of shot to hit the five discs and this is Johan Granath who uh, must hit the last disc in the next couple of shots to beat Nusser who's got them all down in 11 shots. <coughs> oh, he's missed that one. He's got another chance. Nusser getting all five discs in 11 shots from the eight meter range. Yes, yeah. yes, it's clipped, it's gone. So Granath has got him in nine shots. All the comps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Isaac and uh, taking it easy as ever, but uh, in fact, uh, doesn't yeah. want to watch the rest because he took 13 shots and he's at present in third position. A bit disappointed with that. Here's Gareth Edwards. A couple of discs left, and uh, that's his 16th shot. And that's gone. Conte, by the way, had 17 shots. 20 maximum, of course. Missed with that. Granath leading from Nusser. Oh, it's gone again. That's 18 shots he's used, and uh, Drew, in fact, got only four done in 20 shots. Drew really uh, cracking up like he did in the 75 final. He has been a bit of a disappointment. The clock could come into it, because if they're level, it's on time, but I think that one's all right. I think that's all right, yes. Edwards has got it, so he's gone ahead of Drew. Nusser second to Granath's win at the moment with nine, and the last man to go is Carl Schnabel, who's already got three discs broken in five shots. Shot six. Yes. That'll come down. Four out of six. And the leader is Granath, nine shots. Good army technique, exhaling the breath. Good steady arm, but it didn't work. That's seven shots used, and he's slower than Granath, so he really has to get it down in this last shot to win. If he goes to nine shots, then he'll lose on time. This is shot eight. Oh, he's got it. Clipped it. Clipped the bottom right. Good shooting. <laughs> the relief from Carl Schnabel, so the fourth event goes to the ski jumper. That's a big improvement on his performance in his qualifying heat a few weeks back when he was fourth. A point for Conte. Nothing for Edwards. Well, Isaacson, despite scoring only four points in the shooting, still at the top of the table with 30 points. Nusser in second, Schnabel in third. But Drew disappointing down with seven and John Conti only three. Now we uh, turn to the gymnasium, the same ballroom being converted. Here's Johan Granath. He's seen Nusser score 23. He's overtaken that score. Incidentally, Corky Bell just got 11. 32. 32. Well, that's a good score from Granath. 32. He knows that uh, everybody in the gymnasium, except for Starcevic, almost did himself a damage there coming down. Those steps gave way rather badly. Now, John Conti's got to chase Johan Granath, and Conti, at his best, has, uh, has bettered 32. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 23, 24, Overtakes 25, Nusser. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. He's going to have trouble reaching the 35 that he did two years ago. Now, can he better 32 that Granath's already done? I think John has sold out. Gallant effort. But 31 will be his score into second place. Got a sympathy from Corky Bell, who scored 11, and uh, Frank Musser, who had 23. Uh, Guy Drew, I was saying earlier that I think the Frenchman, when all is going well, he's tremendous, but he's an unhappy Frenchman in this final, just as he was last year. 28, 29, 30, One more for John Conti's score. 31. 30, 32. He's matched Granath. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, he's got the sort of personality, however down he is, he can always turn into smile. So Drew will score 33 and go into the lead knowing that there's still Isaacson and Schnabel to follow. And they're two men to be feared in the gym too. 
32, 33, 34, Matt Isaacson is now pumping his way past all their scores. 40, He's now better the score 40, that uh, two, Hemery beat him on. 43, 40, 40, 45, so, yeah. evidence 46, that he's been training again at this. 47, 48. Whatever it is, it's a lifetime best for Isaacson yet again. The tough little Swede. 48 dicks. He now knows how tough he is to beat. What about uh, Schnabel? Private Schnabel, he's having a field day out there. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So he's overtaken Drew, Graneth, Conte, and chasing what seems an impossible score 36, of 48 by Isaacson. <laughs> 39, 40, 41. <laughs> That's his coach out there. We can't believe he's going on. He's having such long pauses. And he keeps getting to the point of no return and overcoming it. Four to go. 46. 47. He's matched him. And bettered him. That's unbelievable from Schnabel, who looked dead at 30. 50. They can't believe it either. It's a hard work. <laughs> The understatement of the year. 51. 52. 53. That is truly remarkable. That overtakes David Starbrook's best ever score. Schnabel wins the dips. The coach has been trying to persuade him to get out of the dips for ages now. And he overtakes Eason on 48 and wins the dips. So now, all ten superstars ready to go for one minute. Bell, Nussa, Graneth, Conti, Van Damme, Edwards. Out of this, sadly, would have taken his place in the middle of their crawl. Schnabel drew Isaacson. Schnabel pumping away. Guy drew the taller figure all in white next to him. We've got Isaacson, and Isaacson going very quickly indeed. He really is driving fast. There he is. Isaacson head on there, Schnabel. Disciplined approach from Isaacson. Drew having a little rest in the middle there. And uh, Nussa having a rest in the middle there. Finding it hard, they set off at a cracking pace. There's Corky Bell at this end. Finding it very hard. No relenting from Isaacson. He'll squeeze the minute and get everything out of it. John Conti been going well too. Absolutely hammering away in the middle there. John was really going well at the end. There's all sorts of scores being bandied about. There's Van Damme. 61 for Corky Bell. Frank Nusse. 82. 82 for Nusser, the athlete. John Grenet, 75. He looked to be going well, but Nusser the best John so far. Conte, 85. That's a fantastic score for John Conte. Ivo van Damme, 52. Oh, I think he was robbed Rick a bit there, too. Crow, 43. And I can't believe that Crow Crow only did 43. 82. Schnabel, 82. A Key very good score. Three. 45. Oh, Drew suffers again. Kiel Isaacson. 
86 for Isaac and he beats Conti by one. A remarkable score yet again. There, Isaacson at the top. Ten points. Schnabel, who chased him so close, gets the eight. John Conti scores at last with six points and Granath gets four. So overall, Isaacson score 40 points. The nearest man to him, Karl Schnabel with 28. Frank Nusser just behind with 25. And that brings us here to Rotterdam Sport and Exhibition Centre, the Ahoy Complex, where last year's final took place. In there, in the main sports hall, the superstars are going to compete in the last five events of this $37,000 European final. So the all-American type drum majorettes and the Beatrix Band really are filling this Ahoy Stadium if it needed to be filled because there's 10,000 people packed into here. This is where we stay for the rest of European Superstars final. The crowd already delighted that Frank Nusser is lying third overall. They've already been watching the cycling time trials on this bank wooden track which has produced an intriguing third and fourth place final because Frank Nusser is in the national superstar champion riding for third and fourth place from his time trial heats against Rudy Kroll. The other Dutchman, the footballer, the man from Ajax, and he's had a few boos because the crowd here also bought fire. Pursuit cycling, opposite sides of the track. Four laps, they try to catch each other up, and away they go. This for third and fourth place. The two fastest riders from the heats will ride the next match race final for first and second place. Kroll and Nusser over on the far side. Four laps, try to catch your man up. The first man to pass his starting point after four laps wins. And Nusser is up slightly at the moment. There's very little between it. Very little between it at all. That's Kroll in the dark shorts. And it is Nusser. You can see Nusser just passing his far side in the white shorts just a little quicker. So Frank Nusser, the hurdler, the Dutch national superstar champion. But Kroll's giving nothing. He's coming back again. Kroll, who faded just a little on that second lap, coming back again. And it's Nusser again at the moment. Nusser has it just by about a bike link. Frank Nusser for this third and fourth place in the cycling. The bell's going for the last lap, and the bell's in the crowd going as well. The crowd here love their cycling. This is one of the great events in the Hoy Stadium. Who's going to get it? Nusser crawl across the line there. And Frank Nusser surely, I think, might have this. But crawl, crawl coming back. He's pedaling furiously and on the line. Crawl in that last few yards picked up a remarkable amount. And Rudy Crawl has it by half a bike length. Great cycling by Rudy Crawl. He faded over the first two. Came back in the third, faded again, but was back in, and Kroll has the third place. Nusser is fourth, and this for the final, and it's Johan Granath, the big Swedish speed skating champion, the man with the massive thighs, the man who won the cycling at Gothenburg the day Henry crashed. And he's up against the ski jump champion, Carl Schnabel, the winter sportsmen to decide the cycle. It's already been one false start, and Schnabel uh, seemed to slightly pull a muscle in that false start. And away they go all right this time. This for first and second place. There's Schnabel. He's not going too quickly. That false start, I think, upset him very slightly. And certainly, Granath is up. Johan Granath from Sweden in the white shorts. The big thighs pumping him round. Remember in Gothenburg, he was the man who rode on after Hemery crashed and eventually won the cycle race final. And he is catching up remarkably on Carl Schnabel here already. Granath really powering around, riding exactly the right line in this four-lap match race final. And look at that. Granath is already catching Schnabel. They're both on the back straight together. Both on the straight together. Schnabel looks over his shoulder, goes a little high on the banking. And it looks very much like as the bell goes for the last lap that Granath could even catch him. There's nothing between them at all now. Coming around the bend, there's two bends after this to go. And Granath coming up and Granath is overtaking him. Granath goes out, Schnabel comes up and almost brings him off. Schnabel almost bringing him off as Granath went high on the banking and it's Johan Granath for that moment on that last bend. My goodness, that was a bit dangerous. And Schnabel almost bringing Granath off. One minute dead and that is fantastic cycling. And that time of one minute is faster than some of the professional cyclists have been doing here in special races throughout the week. Conte and Edwards not in that event. And the gap has been closed on Isaacson, who has 40 points to Schnabel's 36. But in fairness, Schnabel has done one more event than Isaacson. Granath has closed the gap on Schnabel. 
Edwards beat Van Damme, beat Ostarcevic, lost to Isaksen. This is the third and fourth place final where he's playing the American-born basketball player, Kwaki Bell, who represents Belgium. 12. Edwards serving and leading 17-12. This is for third and fourth place on the qualifying matches. 12-18. 12-18, Bell serving. One match to 21 points. 13, 18. Edwards paying the penalty again for a little bit too much defence, which we've seen before. 14, 19. 19, 13, Edwards. 14, 20. Match point to the Welshman. That'll do, 14, that's it. 21. Gareth Edwards, third place in the table tennis and six points at the event. Van from the other matches in the qualifying Bell rounds, Edwards the uh, final brought together. Certainly Bell the two best table tennis players and two of the Edwards best we've seen in the whole of the superstars. The footballer, Rudy Kroll, playing inevitably Shell Isaacs. 16, 17. Kroll serving and dropping just a little on this service uh, game. He was uh, quite well up over Isaacson, but is dropping back just a little now. 16, 18. Good attacking shot from Isaacson. Kroll certainly has more shots, but Isaacson, as ever, getting better 18, every time he plays. 17. Two table tennis winners. Isaacson won in Sweden, Kroll won in Bracknell. 19, 17. Kroll trailing 17, 19. Isaacson. 20-17. Fault on the backhand by Kroll and match point and table tennis. Championship point to Isaacson. Oh, beautiful attacking shot, but it's off the table. Kroll off the table and Isaacson's got it. Good final, though. So 21-17 and Isaacson 10 points. Kroll, Edwards there, has six points out of that third place, but nothing at all down there for John Conte. And the big gap now overall is between Kroll, who's fifth, and Granit, who's fourth. Ten points, but there's nothing much from these until you get to Isaksen, who's uh, 14 points ahead, and he's had four outright victories. Shell, with three events to go in Superstars, it looks as though uh, you've defended your title successfully. What do you put it down to? Have you trained very hard for this? I think uh, I have trained a little, but most events are in my regular practice. So, and table tennis I played a lot when I was young, so I didn't need so much time to get my skill back. It, you look very good at the table tennis. You must have uh, done some recent practice against pretty good players. Yeah, I played against a 12-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> and some of those are pretty good. And, yeah, he beat me every second time. So, Because yeah. they, they start playing table tennis very young in Sweden. Sure, and it's a very big sport in Sweden. Yeah, very big. There's a feeling in the weightlifting hall that Isaacson doesn't need much luck. Uh, there's some very competent weightlifters here, but Isaacson, with his lightest uh, of all body weight, really, he comes in at 11 stone one compared to some of these giants. Here's Edwards. Still at 105 kilograms. And he's not going to make it. And he's very unhappy with himself, but uh, we didn't expect too much from Gareth. He's done well to get this close. Extraordinary to think that this man is a stone and a half lighter than Gareth Edwards and really has been handling these weights with great ease. Isaacson weighing 70.6 kilograms, attempting to lift. 105 kilograms and if he makes it it'll give him a score of 34.4 and I should think he could happily retire on that no wonder he was confident about the weightlifting absolutely rock steady Gareth's second attempt Gareth already has a score of plus 20.8 kilograms, so it's uh, it's good lifting from him. 
at 79.2 kilograms, now attempting to battle for third place, unless Granith, of course, can overtake him. And Gareth's still in trouble. Looked to have it, but I think he's uh, bidding his way out of the competition. Feels that it's not there on this day. Gave it his all, but comes out at 105 kilograms and finishes with a score of plus 20.8. It's really all about Johan Granith now. He's got to handle some pretty impressive weights to get ahead. Granith has got to outlift Gareth Edwards by 10 kilograms to go ahead of him. Granath now on 110 kilograms, 243 pounds, if he makes it, and I think he might if he can hold it steady, yes he's satisfied the judges, he goes ahead of Gareth Edwards on that, but he's still got to pack some weight on if he's going to overtake Schnabel, and there's the weight going on, 115 kilograms, 253 pounds lifting for second place. If Granath makes this, it gives him a score of plus 27 kilograms. Schnabel will be robbed of second place by half a kilogram because he finished with plus 26.5. Isaacson still leads on plus 34.4. This is Granath's second lift. No, it's not there. And at last the audience have got the message that they must be quiet during the lift. They've been giving him a bit of uh, trouble, but now he's got real concentration. He's got one final lift left, and he's let the audience know that he appreciates the sort of atmosphere that's building up in this weightlifting gymnasium. Third and final attempt, 115 kilograms, lifting for second place if he makes it. He's going to hold it. He's got it. 115 kilograms for Granath. He's delighted as well he might be. It took him three lifts, but what a marvellous lift when he made it. It's the second one I should have had. Yeah. When I cleaned it. Only. On the first lift, I knew I could clean it and I missed. Yeah. Right? I missed out. The second time, I knew I could clean it and I should have locked out. That's well, been a strength part, but... Every I, everything you've cleaned in the past, you've been able yeah. to jerk, and I was sure if you got it to yeah, shoulders, you'd go yeah. up. But I could feel it. I had to work hard upper body, you know, because yeah. my legs were just a little bit weak. What about the flute? Were you feeling weak, or did the competition get you and lift you a bit? Because you were uh, lifting very well. It got me and lifted me a bit, yeah, but, you know, I don't make an excuse. That was great lifting by anybody's standards, hey, you know? <laughs> but... Um, what a competition. The only man that wasn't under pressure was Shale Isaacson, who got his 10 points. Look how hard Granath had to work for those eight. Schnabel got six, and Gareth Edwards gets four. Overall, that's the lead for Isaacson. 60 points. Granath has overtaken Nusser to get back into third place, but Schnabel still easy in second with 42. And in charge of football, event nine, Leo Vandercroft of FIFA, the international referee, who with us has uh, seen Gareth Edwards win the first part, the dribbling skills, putting three balls out of three past Peter Ajanski of Eindhoven, who's the goalkeeper here for this fight. Now it's the penalties. This is Frank Nusser, the Dutch hurdler. That's his third shot and his second goal. He got one in the first two, and now he's got two goals out of three. Five shots a goal. That's another good one, left footed in the same place, three out of four. 
Last kick for Nusser. Four out of five. That's the same as Guy Drew of France, the showbiz 11 footballer. Drew got four out of five as well, so Edwards has got something to aim for now, despite his win in the first part of the competition. This is Corky Bell, who's got one goal out of two shots. Oh, my goodness, not a great footballer. And uh, right-footed dribble shot, two out of three. They all count. And Ajansky, oh, no! Ajansky trapped it with his foot and put it over the top of his head, and the crowd are loving it. Loving it. Well, Bell has got three out of four. And thankfully, puts that one over the top to save everybody's face because it really would have been a bit ridiculous if he'd have got up into the reckoning. But Jansky will remember that one for the rest of his life. Gareth Edwards, leader after the slalom, he's missed his first kick. But makes no mistake with that one. He's got to score three to win the football overall after his good success in the first part. He's got one with two kicks, two with three. Two kicks left, one goal required. That'll do it, in the corner. He's got another kick, but it won't really matter. It's just for his own sake, because with his fine result in the first part of the competition, Edwards has got the football, and it gets the post, against the bar, but it doesn't matter. Gareth Edwards has given Britain their first outright win in the 76 Superstars final event, got out of his bed to do it, and has got 10 points. Bella Nusser equals second. Conte gets three points, equal with Drew. But those 10 points will give Gareth Edwards 20 overall, and he'll be equal fifth, and he's only been able to do half of the events. I think if he'd been fully fit, he'd been up there in the top three. There's $23,000 resting on the top four places. The men who can win it are all amateurs. All that money will go to amateur sport. The seven finalists for this steeplechase, having had their uh, briefing from the referee, Mike campbell Amerton, now under starter's orders. John Conti in this, but no Gareth Edwards. Right on the bank in there, Carl Schnabel, and it's all about second, third, and fourth places. $13,000 resting on that. Shell Isaacson already has the $10,000 for first place in his pocket, or at least in the Swedish Amateur Athletic Association's pocket. And now the $6,000 for second place, the $4,000 for third, and the $3,000 for fourth rests on second, third, and fourth place. Granath is the man who is the key, and he leads at the moment. Isaacson's in there. Schnabel must watch Granath. Schnabel is in third place at the moment. Sitting out watching this, Frank Nusser, who's completed his events and has 38 points. But uh, here the great battle begins. Johan Granath and Karl Schnabel. Isaacson, an academic bystander, but really Granath has to beat Schnabel because Schnabel has 42 points, Granath has 38. And there are 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, and 1 for this final event. Only Isaacson between two leading contenders for the money and all the Swedes got over. Granath slipped badly coming out of the water. They've not worn spikes because of the danger of uh, spiking one another. Granath, it was a slip. They've got the bell, one lap to go and Granath has, must know that Schnabel is right behind him. Isaacson in second. Granath, this big powerful Swede who won the weightlifting. He'll get 10 points for this. And if Isaacson will hold off Schnabel, there's only there's four points difference, and they'll be exactly level. And uh, he's looked behind him to see what's happening. Granath's going to win. Isaacson has now become a key factor by getting second. Schnabel gets third, so that's ten points to the Swede. And uh, Rudy Kroll is fourth. John Condy comes in last. Isaacson very much the key factor, the Swedes running as a team. He wanted to assure that uh, Granath would get the maximum 10 points for that race. There are the 10, Isaacson eight, Schnabel only six, whereas he might have got second, Kroll on four. Overall, of course, that's going to make a fundamental difference. Isaacson away clear winner at 68 points, but in equal second place, Schnabel and Granath. Gareth Edwards gets sixth from four events, John Conti ninth with only 13 points. Show, congratulations, wiping the sweat off your brows. <laughs> what a bit of sweat to you this time.
Um, was it harder this time than when you won the title the first time? Uh, I think it was harder even that I, that I scored more points this right. year, but I was very lucky in some events when Granada scored nothing, I scored 10, so the gap was too big. So at the end of it all, Johan Grana is again second to his Swedish teammate, the champion Isaksson, like he was in the Swedish heat. But I think it'll be a long time before we forget the performance of the uh, Olympic ski jump champion, Carl Schnabel. Those 53 dips in the gymnasium were really something to watch. He scored points in everything he's taken part in to share that second place with Granit. But the man who beat them all, the rostrum ready, the champion again and the superstar. It's been said that the pole vaulter must have the speed of a good class sprinter, the strength of a weightlifter, the agility of a gymnast and cool, cool courage. Isaacson has proved to have these qualities, plus a few other game skills to spare. So the traditional champagne and it's Art Schenk, the great Dutch speed skater, the man who was third in last year's final, doing the honours and uh, presenting the prizes in this year's final here in the Ahoy Stadium in Rotterdam. And I think uh, you'll agree, like us, that these 11 finalists have earned every drop of it. Naturally, it goes to Isaac, first of all, but uh, no, he's got some... Oh, it's a traditional Buckner racing salute, the Scharbaf for the, uh, the men he's beaten. Isaacson taking the spotlight right until the very end. So, the taste of champagne for the superstar. Granath and Schnabel, the competition, unable to separate them in the end. And a nice touch there, Marco Ostarkovic, the man who was last hoisting the champion onto his shoulders. And Isaacson, I think, leaving us with just that one question, like the one you're asking, where do you find someone to beat him?